I'm particularly interested in rivers because they're really a microcosm of the environment. Over the last couple hundred years of human history, we have dramatically simplified rivers and floodplains. We've removed physical complexity, we've removed biodiversity, and we're starting to realize some of the effects of that in terms of both river ecosystem services, but also human health. I started working on mountain streams when I came to Colorado State University. One of the things that's different about a mountain stream is there's very little buffering. Anything that happens in the adjacent environment affects that stream very quickly. I've become more and more fascinated with what I sometimes call extreme environments. So I'm working in the Arctic now and in the tropics and in hyper-arid regions as well as in the mountains. My work is fairly integrative. I find myself having to learn very quickly about a new field that I don't necessarily have an academic background in, in literature that's spread all over the disciplines. When I learned about the online bibliographies, I thought that was a really nice venue. I could see a lot of advantages. I wanted to be able to use them immediately. <laughs> so one way to uh, work towards that was to start developing them. My experience in conducting research online has really been channeled through peer-reviewed journals primarily. They're a great resource, but of course it takes time to look at a lot of articles. I'm excited about the online bibliography because it is going through the peer review process, so it's got that quality control, but it will give you a much more accessible introduction to an area than you can get by reading or at least skimming a lot of journal articles yourself. My hopes for the environmental science online bibliography would be that we have a very, very broad outlook. As people become more concerned about environmental issues, for example, and about sustainability, there's a lot that the earth sciences can contribute to that.